Here are the top 15 ChatGPT Chrome extensions that will give you superpowers in 2023. Okay, so the first Chrome extension we're going to review is called ChatSonic. And ChatSonic is like ChatGPT, but it's built with GPT-4 superpowers, and it addresses the limitations of ChatGPT. It gives you real-time answers on current events, trending topics, and more with this exclusive ChatGPT Lite Chrome extension. Now, I've already gone ahead and installed it. You can just click the Add to Chrome button. It's free. I will leave all the links in the description for you to check out all these things that we're reviewing today. But I've already installed it. And what that gives me now is the power to right-click if I highlight something, and I can go and ask ChatSonic. I can summarize with ChatSonic, or I can count words and characters. In our particular case for this demo, I'm just going to click Ask Chat Sonic, and it will say Ask Chat Sonic. An example, write an email in the style of Shakespeare. You click this button, you generate the content, or I can use my selected text, which is copied below. In this case, I can say Summarize, and just hit Enter, and it's working on it. Okay, here we go. It's a little slow, so it's also giving us latest data from Google. That is a, a true limitation of ChatGPT as we know it now. So it went out and it, it gave me the summary of what ChatSonic is. It gave me a little icon. Basically, I can copy this now. I can refresh and regenerate. And I can move on to next history. So I have history controls up here. I can review it. I can leave feedback and I can change the shortcut. I can reset this. Okay, another option we can use is we can highlight this text again. We could right click. We could go to chat Sonic GPT with superpowers and we can just say summarize. It's a quicker shortcut. It's gonna summarize everything for us just as we saw before. I also forgot to mention that you could stop generating with this button. So we'll just click stop generating. We can also edit. We can copy the summary. Let's do another thing. We'll count the characters now. So we'll right click, go to count words and characters. And there you go. It's pretty quick here. It just gives us the quick summary of a word count, character count, average word length, and longest word length. Very helpful. Up next, we have TweetGPT. TweetGPT is designed for Twitter, so we'll head on over to Twitter. If we try to reply, we will now see a robot icon. If we click the robot icon, it'll ask us to pick a sentiment or a feeling of some sort. Is it supportive? Is it snarky? Is it optimistic? Let's say it's supportive. We'll just wait for the robot to finish here. It's blinking. That indicates that it's processing. And there you go, just like that. Responded with, that's awesome. Love how SolidJS is constantly improving and making things more efficient. Can't wait to try out the new features. Another powerful feature of TweetGPT is we can create new tweets that never existed before. All we have to do is just click our button with inside of our new tweet what's happening dialog here. So we'll just click that. And let's say, uh, I don't know, weather. And let's do excited. Okay, wow, the weather today is absolutely gorgeous. The sun is shining. There is not a cloud in the sky and the temperature is perfect for being outside. I'm so excited to enjoy this beautiful day. Cool, and again, you can edit these any which way you want, but there you go, that's TweetGPT. Let's move on to the next example. Up next, we have Prometheus. You can converse with ChatGPT by holding your spacebar. How this works is you have to head on over to ChatGPT itself. Now, if I press the spacebar, you can actually talk to it with your voice. So I'll ask it, what is the distance from the Earth to the Sun? And just like that, you get a response by just talking to it. Instead of typing every prompt out yourself, you could just talk to it. Next up, we have the YouTube Summary with ChatGPT Chrome extension. This one's super powerful because we've all watched YouTube videos that are incredibly long. This one's 12 minutes, 22 seconds. All I have to do once the Chrome extension is installed is come up here to transcribe and summary. Click this button right here and it will just do it. So you could copy this text out. You could do other things with ChatGPT now. You could view the summary in OpenAI. You can jump to current time. You can copy the transcript. Very, very powerful stuff here. Just don't do it on my videos because I need the watch time. So please watch all my videos. Appreciate it. Love you. Up next, we have Summarize. 
Unlike YouTube's summary with ChatGPT, Summarize Chrome extension works on any page with a single click. So once Summarize is installed in Chrome, just highlight any text, click on the icon above, and it will summarize everything for you. Very simple, very elegant, very handy. Up next, we have Reader GPT, a GPT-based web page summarizer. So once again, we'll head over to Wikipedia for our software engineering article here. And without even highlighting anything, all I have to do is come up here and click on the Reader GPT, and it will start to summarize using ChatGPT. Super helpful as well. Just give it a little moment to finish. Puts everything in bullet points for you. Couldn't be any simpler than this. Check that one out too. Okay, up next we have Merlin, an OpenAI ChatGPT Plus extension on all websites. You can take your dull internet experience from drab to fab. Using Merlin is super, super simple. We'll head on over to our Wikipedia page for software engineering. And to get this activated, once it's installed, you'll have a little icon on the top right up here. All you have to do then is just highlight some text and then down here in the bottom, you're gonna have a new menu. You click that menu and then of course, it presents us with the prompt that we can type in. With Merlin, there's a free and a paid option. You can go pro or you can use the free option and you, you have, in my case, I have 51 queries left. You can also choose between uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4, which is super helpful if you're not paying for GPT-4. You can also use your voice, you can include relevant links, and you can keep it concise and simple. Now that I've selected some text, I've put some text in here, the selected context is copied below. I can go ahead and ask it to summarize. And we'll click enter. Merlin is casting its spells via OpenAI. Okay, and there it goes. Just like all the others, quick for summarizing. Um, what I'd like to do is click on keep it concise and simple, and then I'm gonna hit regenerate. It did summarize it quite more compact and concise, so that's great. I'm also gonna ask it to include relevant links. And so as you can see, it's just appending this. So I'm saying summarize, and then it says use uh, simple language. So it's just appending the prompt. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, regenerate. And now let's see if we get some links. And yes, we did. We have a link here to Technopedia. You can click on that link and there you go. So that one's super helpful. As you can see, I have 48 queries left. So you'll probably run out and then you'll have to upgrade. That is Merlin. And next on our list, we have ShareGPT. You can share your ChatGPT conversations. What it does is once it's installed, you have to head over to OpenAI's website for ChatGPT again. And any conversations you're having from the left side, from in the, the main window here, will get shared by clicking on the share button. If you click it once, it creates a new URL for you to share anywhere. And there's not much else to it than that. And it will also give you like, you know, how many people shared it. You can copy this link, which I think is really cool if you're sharing prompts to your team or to your social media or whatnot. I think that's a pretty interesting idea. The only downside I'd say, and if the developer ends up watching this is the URLs are public. And I don't really like that. I, I wish there was a some sort of an account that I could add people and just uh, not give away everything if I accidentally click that button. So that's my two cents on it. But yeah, go check that one out. Next on our list, we have Fancy GPT, which makes your chat GPT threads fancy. And once Fancy GPT is installed, just click on the button once you're inside of OpenAI. And when you click on it, and then you click make your chat GPT fancy, and you're presented with this wonderful page that you can beautify your threads and store them for future reference or sharing with others. You can choose a style that you like. You can add an optional snippet title. You can exclude any messages that you don't want. You can click and drag on chat GPT messages to highlight content. You can click and save an image to download your fancy snippet as an image. You can click save PDF to download your fancy snippet as a searchable PDF. You can click save to text file to download your fancy snippet as a text file in markdown format. Now I'm going to click don't show this at each time. So here's the title. We have what is the distance from the earth to the sun and then the actual response. So that's super cool. I could go a light mode. I can go a dark mode. I can go a sketch mode. I can go neon mode. 
And again, I can save all of these options however I'd like and share them among my team or friends. Next up, we have ChatGPT Prompt Genius. And with this extension, you can discover, share, import, and use the best prompts for ChatGPT. You can even save your chat history locally. All right, so here I am inside of ChatGPT Prompt Genius's Chrome extension. From the menu here, it says I can search prompts, I can add a new prompt, I can find curated prompts, I can see public prompts, I have a light mode, dark mode, I can view by history, there's some settings, and there's a storage tab. But what I want to do is I want to create a new prompt. I'm going to assign that one a category of poetry, and I'm going to tell it, let's say, my first poem. And I'll say just something, you know, something simple. Act as a poet. Your first job is to write a poem about cats versus dogs. From here, I can add a new tag to it. So I'll say animals. Now I can just, I could either delete it, or I could share it on Reddit, or I could run this prompt. Now I'm going to click use this prompt. And now I can just say use prompt and it will fill it in for me down here at the bottom. So act as a poet, your first job is to write a poem about cats versus dogs. Uh, and now I will go ahead and hit enter. And there you go, it's creating a poem for me. What's really nice about this one is you can save your prompts, you can share your prompts, and I could assign variables to these prompts. So let's say I have a prompt that says for engineering, I could or software engineering, I could say refactor this this code, right? And then I can inject where I say use this code, and I can supply ChatGPT now with that code, and it can go and refactor it. So I could reuse that prompt over and over again. Incredibly useful. Uh, I really like this extension. It's been a lot of fun using. This. Next up, we have ChatGPT for Google. I like this one as well. I've been using it quite a bit. What this one does is it displays ChatGPT response alongside of search engine results. You have a few options once you install the Chrome extension. You can uh, set its trigger mode to be always or question mark or manually. I like to set it in always. So every time I run a query, it just shows me um, the ChatGPT section on the right side, which I'll show you in a minute. You have different theme options, light and dark, of course. Uh, and then you have the language settings for various different languages, whatever your language is. And then you have an AI provider. You can choose which AI it will be using. Now all we have to do is Google something. So we'll Google software engineering, and we should see something on the right side, which we do. Here, we see ChatGPT doing its thing right in context with our search results. If you want to go even deeper, you could click on Let's Chat, and now you can type something else into the prompt here, and you can just continue that context and conversation. Next up, we have ChatGPT Writer. You can write mail, messages with AI. ChatGPT Writer allows you to use your Gmail account or any website and write a message. So if you notice, I have Gmail open, and down at the bottom, right by the send button, I have a little icon that says ChatGPT Writer. I'll click that. And in this case, I'm just going to use a Reddit newsletter to respond. Um, briefly enter what you want to reply. I'll just say, hey, cool, not interested. Uh, and I'll generate a reply. OK, so hey, cool, not interested, response generated. All right, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything I can help you with. Uh, and I can insert that response now and just hit send. So that's super helpful. Go check out this extension, ChatGPT Writer. You can write your mails, you can respond. Robots talking to robots. Okay, so here we are again inside of OpenAI's ChatGPT interface. And one thing you'll notice right away, it gave us a new menu option, which is really cool because it is giving us web access. We can toggle that on or off. We can ask for different results. So if there's, you know, like if you were to Google something, you'll ask, you'll get different result pages. This is very helpful for that as well. 
Um, you can change it. So do you want the results from within the past year to the past day? And then you can ask for a different region. Very, very cool. You can also, similar to the other Chrome extensions we've reviewed so far, you can have a default prompt or you can uh, create a new prompt. You can save prompts. So let's try a site and then let's put in our uh, thing. We'll say um, news. Oh boy, this is, this is, this is going to be scary. But uh, let's also get it, get it from the past day. That is probably one of my favorite extensions is this one right here because the amount of work it takes to generate a prompt is a challenge, right? And so this went ahead and grabbed all of the sources, all of the news that is maybe happening right now in the world on this current date and provided a new prompt for it, wrote it all for us. I didn't do anything but writing maybe a few words and it gave it instructions and it gave it a query and it even used dynamic parameters here to inject the date and everything else. That's so cool to me. I really love this. Next up, we have Engage AI for ChatGPT, which uses comments on social networks. Let's try this example on LinkedIn. Okay, so once Engage AI has been installed in your Chrome, you could head over to something like LinkedIn, for instance, and or any social network, and go ahead and you know leave a comment for somebody. So I'll just click on a random one here. I'm going to click Comment, and I will click this icon right here, hover over that, and now I can choose either a custom prompt, a question, congratulations, disagree, funny, or friendly. I'll do friendly, and let's see what it does for me. And just like that, it writes itself. I'm engaging with this user on LinkedIn without having to write anything except for two mouse clicks. So that's incredibly powerful. You can also add a custom prompt, which I'm not gonna cover in this video. And here we have Speak to Chat GPT, which allows you to speak your prompts and it will translate your words into text, fill in the input of the Chat GPT OpenAI's prompt, and then once you hit enter, it will respond audibly with a voice that you choose, similar to Siri or Alexa, and it will then read out your prompt. So let's go give that a try. So here I am inside of Chat. GPT's OpenAI's interface, and we're now presented with a start button. Once I hit the start button, it'll automatically start listening to my microphone, and it will interpret my words, convert them into text, fill in the prompt, and then we can just hit enter. Talk to me. What is the distance between the earth and the sun? And from here, we'll have to hit enter. I guess it doesn't do it automatically. So we'll hit enter. 152, one million kilometers away. And there you go, just like that. It, it reads it back to you as well. You can also have the option to stop it from listening. You can disable the text to speech. You can skip the message currently being read by the bot. And you can open the settings or you could buy the developers a beer. And just like that, you can be a superhero. All you have to do is install the Chrome extensions that I will provide in the links below. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Eric. You have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. You see, do you see that? Do you see, do you, can, I mean, come on. You wanna be a superhero? Go be a superhero. Come on, do it.